communications in simplest terms is bringing together the different communications methods and technologies with the intent to make it easier for individuals to contact who they need to and for individuals to manage their communications. And then there's a next level of unified communications which has to do with optimizing the business process so that now communications can be a directly integrated part of structured and unstructured business process. Now, from an example standpoint, I think it helps to lay out what exact problem are we addressing with unified communications? Why do we need to bring these communications together? Uh, how does that help the end user and how does it help the business be more effective? A great example of that is when you want to contact somebody, can you find them? Can you initiate contact in the way that's most efficient for what you're communicating about the topic and for the situation you're in? Uh, and being able to make that choice instantaneously as opposed to uh, communicate across multiple different channels and leave messages and try and successfully to reach somebody, unified communications can streamline that process so the user can see exactly who's available at what time and with what communication method and they can reach them immediately. And then on the receiving side, when I've got you know 14 different ways someone can contact me, if I have to manage 14 different inboxes, 14 different you know on-off switches when I don't want to be disturbed, 14 different uh, devices to carry around, that's just not efficient, right? And so if I can do that in a unified way, so people have one way to contact me, and I can then route and control that with one set of rules, it's very powerful in terms of making it easier for me to be connected when I'm ready to be connected to, and also managing communications when you know, I need to be in a do not disturb zone or when I only want priority communications to come through. People want to do things that's natural. In Communications 2.0, is it the driver of the, the use case of the user or is it a productivity issue? When is it from, for the owner? It's, it's a big step to pilot to run these programs and put these new technologies or What is the key thing in your mind? Well, the key kind of enthusiasm and excitement does come from the user. We see that. The user experiences this and gets excited and other people see that and they want to sign up and uh, be on that also. And so we do see the general, the excitement really comes from the user experience. Be it, why? Because it makes people more effective in communicating across their organization and outside the organization. The cost drivers and some of those other issues do come from an IT uh, information technology professional pain point. One example is the number of directories that have to be man managed when you provision a new user or when an employee leaves the company or even moves offices. The difficulty in terms of number of directories, number of devices that have to be provisioned, all of that is just more complex than it needs to be. Uh, and so there's the cost factor and that complexity of management, which will sometimes, from an IT perspective, prompt people to look for uh, technology solutions that address that. But I do think the enthusiasm and the excitement comes from users actually experiencing What is the big trend in unified communications? In your talk at the UC Summit, you mentioned that there was a couple things that you were watching that you've learned. The things like networking issues are important. But you mentioned hosting, hosting services. What are the big trends that are really the tipping point to make unified communications a reality? Well, I think for the technology trends that underlie this uh, is really about software. Software has the intelligence and it has the capability to provide that unified user experience across multiple devices so that my mobile device and my PC and my web experience, that those are all unified, consistent, easy to use and grasp if I'm moving from one to the other. And then bringing together voice, for example, if I'm going to have a phone call and at the same time have an instant message and maybe add video to that and then add another party by just dragging and dropping. Yeah, it's software that's making that user experience come together. So we think one, it's software that's set the stage right on top of moving communications to IP. It's software that then makes that more than just a phone call and brings them together. Then there's a couple of other trends that are really, we think, going to push it over the edge. You mentioned hosting. Uh, providing software as a service Certainly for organizations that can't afford to provision all of these capabilities, you know, a small organization that maybe can't manage uh, a full communication system, and so they outsource some of it, they subscribe online to some others, and then maybe they have some on-premise stuff. If, if you can provide a full unified communication solution that they can just subscribe to, that'll be a very compelling value proposition. So I think that's one trend. Hosting will really broaden the number of people that Hosting can access Hosting of the services, critical Hosting services. Hosting of the critical services and the unified communications capabilities. Uh, I think mobility. Uh, we've now seen the value of email on the mobile device and calendaring on mobile device in, a bit, in addition to just having a basic contact list and making phone calls. And I think that will also bring it to the next uh, level. In the, I, when I talk to audiences all over the world, I ask them how many people receive more 
phone calls on their cell phone and their desk phone. Almost everybody raises their hand. Some specialized exceptions to that, of course, but for the most part, information workers receive more on their cell phone. And that just demonstrates the fact that um, mobility is a key driver in communications. And so I think a first-class unified communications mobile experience will really take people towards that also. What is the role of software going forward in the communications sector or in unified communication? And talk about what, what that is in that equation. I think software is a catalyst that's going to change everything. I think that's the first step to enable all these other things that we talked about. In the old environment, you're right, you had you know, box vendors and you had vertically integrated stacks. You would go to a vendor and you would buy everything from the devices down to the, uh, uh, the networking to the hardware to all the way down in the services to implement and maintain. And then if you wanted another solution, you went to another vendor and got that similar stack. This is very similar to what we saw in the mainframe world where you would buy your application, your OS, your box, even the water cooling system to put in the basement from that vendor, and then you would get all your maintenance and updates from them. And that changed when software was applied to an open platform, and we see the same thing happening with communications today. Software is being applied so that you can run it on industry standard hardware. There will be open interfaces that will allow for that developer experience to build applications on top. Protocols and everything will be opened up and published so that device vendors can build unique experiences and devices. And that way, uh, the ecosystem can advance in the same way we've seen the PC ecosystem grow over time. And I think software is the catalyst to that. But most important, Software is what makes the user experience compelling, and that's where the real Great. Final are. question for folks out there who are playing and dabbling with the idea of unified communications implementation or taking a pilot step. What is your advice to them in terms of what to think about, how to approach it? Yep. Is there any kind of best practices, approaches that you've seen? Yeah, there, there are a couple of schools of thoughts here, and we definitely fall into one of those. One of the schools of thoughts is... Go and rip and replace everything you've got, your legacy system, upgrade the network, upgrade the PBX, buy new handsets for everyone. That approach uh, may be necessary and appropriate in some cases, but generally it's very expensive and we hear from users that if you go through all of that just to get dial tone, you know, you're not really adding incremental value to the end user. You, know, you might have to do some of these things, but uh, that's not where the real differentiating value of unified communications is. So we recommend people take the other path, which is look at how you can layer on unified communications capability inside your existing organization, leveraging your current infrastructure and building that future-ready foundation that I mentioned in the last, uh, the last question. If you can add presence into your organization and then start to add voice and video, VoIP, uh, unified messaging and layer that on while still leveraging your existing infrastructure, that gives you a path to bring immediate low-cost, low-risk value to the user. Prepare the user by getting them used to these concepts of unified communications and then also set yourself up so over the years as you migrate out different aspects of your infrastructure, you can migrate in software-powered communications. And that's the, uh, that's the approach that we've seen customers take very successfully. Hey, we're here with Eric Swift, the Senior Director for Microsoft Unified Communications where presence is at the center software intelligent endpoints. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you. We're here at the UC Summit.